Lately, I've been getting a lot of questions on how to randomly rotate and scale objects when using the copy to points node. So I figured we would take an updated look at this as the video that I made on this a couple of years ago is a little outdated now. So jumping in here, I just have a tube and then a grid here. So we're gonna use the tube as our object that we're gonna be copying to the points of the grid. So let's go ahead and drop down a copy to points and wire these on in. Whoops. And take a look. So the first thing that you should notice is that they are all facing upwards. Now, if I take a look at this tube again, you can see that it is not facing upwards. So you would think that when you do the copy to points operation that it would keep the orientation that you had before. But that is not exactly how it works, which brings me to the first point that you need to understand when using the copy to points. And that is, if you look down here this little blue axis, the positive Z direction is going to be your up vector basically. So whatever is facing that way is going to be uh, facing upwards. So that is why they're facing up along the normals. If we take a look at the grid, should oops, have our normals here. So the normals are facing up and our up vector is going to be facing along the normal. Which brings me to the first way to randomize the rotation of our objects here, which is probably the easiest way to actually go about this. And that we can just drop down an attribute randomize. And then in here we can just randomize the normal. And this gives us a random rotation. Now we want to set this to negative one in all three of these values in order to get a completely random rotation. And this just normal or this just changes the normals of the grid. So if I take a look at this, you can see these little blue lines are where the normals are facing. And that is where our up vector is going to face. So that is creating the random rotation. Now, if we want to randomize the scale of these, we can just simply drop down another attribute randomize. Whoops. Let's undo that. An attribute randomize, wire this in here. And then we can set this to a universal attribute that Houdini recognized, known as P scale. And we can set this to a one dimensional object. And let's go ahead and change this from negative one. Let's actually just reset all these. Go from negative one to maybe like, I don't know, 0.3. And this gives us a random scale for every single object here. That's the easiest way to just randomly or randomly um, scale the objects. And then you can obviously play around with the seed to get some different looks there. And that goes for the same with the attribute randomized on the normals. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some other ways that we can go about doing this. One of the other ways that we can do, which is a little bit more complex and I'm not gonna go into kind of the math and stuff behind it, but that is by using the orient attribute. So if we go ahead and change this attribute name to orient, which is again, another universal attribute that Houdini recognizes, we can see that we have a little, a little weird stuff going on. And first of all, the orient attribute would need to be a four vector thing. Now this doesn't completely randomize the rotation. So you're gonna to wanna to set this distribution from uniform to inside sphere, or you could do direction or orientation. Both of these work kind of the same-ish in the visual representation. And then you can adjust how this looks. And if you wanna take this, visualize this points down to maybe like 100, you can see what this cone angle is actually doing. It's kind of just spreading things out along the inside of a sphere-ish, I guess if you would say. So can just uncheck that and we get some random rotation with that. 
Now, another way that we can do this is by creating a rotation attribute. So we'll go ahead and set this to uniform again here. We're going to just call this rotation. And we'll change this from 0 to 360 and all of these. So we want to be have a 360 degree rotation or a possibility for a 360 degree rotation for every single axis. And then we can wire that into a point VOP and dive inside of the point VOP. And we can actually just get rid of these and bring in a bind. We'll call this the same as we called our attribute, so rotation. And then this is a vector see where my vector there's a vector and then we want to do a degrees to radians because this is going to come in as degrees and we need to change that to radians that's what the orient attribute um, will kind of use so we want to do a vector to quaternion because it's also a quaternion. And again, this is kind of a higher level than I want to go into in this video. This is how you can kind of go about creating a random rotation in this manner. And then we just do a bind export. We'll call this orient. And we want to set this to a, let's see, a vector four. There we go. And that gives us this random rotation that we got going on here. So all these different ways work to create random rotations. And then again, you can play with the seed here and get some different looks depending on what you want. But if I was gonna do it, I would just go about it using the normals. That's kind of the easiest way and quickest way. Actually, the inside sphere way works uh, pretty well as well. But I do have this project file. It's going to be available on Patreon. I'll try to throw it up for free. So if you want to reference it, then um, you can go ahead and try and download it from my Patreon. Like I said, I'll try to put it up as free. I've never tried to do that before. So I'm not sure if it'll work. If not, I'll just throw it on the lowest tier so you can grab that if you want. Um, and then this just has an outline of some different ways. This is using a for loop, which can be useful for certain situations. This is kind of a random weird setup using colors to do the rotation. It's a little weird, but gets you thinking outside the box. And then these just kind of go over what we covered in this video. So I would definitely take a look at the project file if you're interested. Like I said, grab it on Patreon if you want that. But hopefully this helped you out and kind of updated the video that I made a couple of years ago that involved the copy stamp. Uh, this kind of a newer, or a, I was kind of a newer Houdini user at the time. And that was kind of how I had set things up, just sharing what I had learned as I had played around. But this is a much better way of going about it. So definitely use this use these different manners to create random rotations and scales. Anyways, like I said, hopefully this helped you out and updated you if you were trying to follow the original video. But anyways, I have a bunch of other stuff on Houdini. If you want to learn more about Houdini, make sure to check those out. I also cover some stuff on Redshift. So if you're interested in any of that, make sure you check those out. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.